All right, joining me now, my friend John Phillips of the great John Phillips Show on KABC in Los Angeles. John, it's not exactly news. I've been saying this for months. Other people have been saying it too. I think he gets pushed out the back door after the midterms. Pre-midterms probably looks too chaotic. After the midterms, everyone knows he's a millstone around the neck of Democrats. But it's not a small thing to push out the president. Am I stupid? Well, at this point, they're not even trying to hide it. You have Mayor Pete, who's essentially on the Sunday shows running for president. You have Gavin Newsom running ads in the state of Florida, who is essentially running for president. You have Kamala Harris sending her people out saying that she's unhappy about Gavin Newsom spending money in Florida because it's obvious that she's running for president too. It reminds me of of what happens when you have a greedy family that's all having Thanksgiving dinner over at the Patriarch's house. And they're not even being coy about what they want when the guy finally rolls a seven. It's like, I, I remember at one point, uh, <laughs> my mom was over at my house and she was cooking one of those holiday meals. And she goes, uh, where do you keep your fine china? And I go, at your house until the reading of the will. And that's pretty much what's <laughs> happening right now in the Democratic Party. All right, All right, so, John, game this out for me. As far as the powers that be, I'm talking about the big tech guys, the, the, the big money people who obviously control the Democratic Party. It's how they ran everyone out of the primary last time so everyone could get behind Papa Joe. If Joe Biden really doesn't run, if he gets pushed out, which I think he will, where do you where do you think they align? I mean, surely they don't go with Dome, right? She's terrible. Uh, maybe but butt gig? Do they go with the rear admiral? Uh, it's actually going to be a free for all. I mean, you're going to have all of these candidates and more throwing their hat into the ring, uh, and I don't think there will be a front runner. Uh, Gavin Newsom certainly thinks it's going to be him. Uh, Kamala Harris thinks she is entitled to it, and anyone who 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 decides to run against her will, I'm sure, be sexist and racist and and any number of other things. Uh, but this is is almost the worst case scenario for the Democratic Party power brokers because they won't have control over the process. They won't have control over who's going to be the nominee. In fact, we don't even necessarily know that it's going to be Iowa going first and New Hampshire and Nevada and South Carolina. They're talking about changing that entire calendar because those states, those early voting states, aren't diverse enough for them. So you throw in a big state to start off the process. You start with California, you start with Illinois, New York. That's going to change the type of candidate that you end up with. It's not going to be like Jimmy Carter going to Iowa and winning there and then picking up some steam and eventually ending up with the nomination. It's going to be a very, very, very different scenario for them. Okay, well, let's game plan this out. And please feel free to shoot down any of these thoughts I have going through my head. But if you say they're going to go with places like South Carolina, California, okay, South Carolina is black. You got to have the black vote to win the Democratic primary there. That's why Joe Biden went for Clyburn so hard last time, got Clyburn on his side. Clyburn fits his, uh, flips the switch, Joe Biden's the nominee. You got to get the black vote in South Carolina. California, I don't even know what kind of vote you people get out there. But I do know this. Dome isn't going to get a vote in California. Everyone hates her there, even though she's from there. And the rear admiral's not going to get a vote in South Carolina because he's gay. He's very gay. And I don't care that that offends people. That's a big deal in the black community. That's why he struggled so bad last time. He was out there drinking 40s with people out of, out of brown paper bags. You remember. So assuming Dome and Pete are gone, maybe you disagree with me there, is it Newsom? Well, he hopes that it, it's him, but you're, you're 100% right. The voters that determine who is the Democratic nominee, by and large, are the most reliable Democratic voters who are older black voters. Older black voters were the ones that chose Joe Biden last time around. They had an opportunity to go for Kamala. They passed on her. Uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg didn't have any support at all in that community, so it wasn't him. It might not be one of these names that we're talking about right now. It might be someone that comes out of nowhere. Typically, when Democrats nominate someone who's next in line, they lose. That's what happened to Walter Mondale. Uh, That's what happened to John Kerry. That's what happened to Al Gore. When they have candidates that do really well, they're candidates that a year before the process started, no one had ever heard of. Who'd ever heard of Bill Clinton before 1992? 
Who'd ever heard of Barack Obama before 2008? They just came out of nowhere and they captured the imagination of the Democratic Party and they were able to essentially be in the water when the wave hit. Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History, The Forgotten Genocide, the first episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.